Thank you, Deputy Speaker, Speaker and colleagues. I'm really proud to support this report. And I want to take the opportunity today to acknowledge, honour and thank everybody involved. I want to refer to some of the key findings in the report. And I want to finish by referring specifically to my electorate of Indi. But to the committee, to the wonderful people that are involved in doing this report, can I extend to you my thanks, not only for your excellent company, but to the leadership and the very high level of skill you brought to this task. To the co-chairs, Patrick Dobson and Julian Lisa, I have learnt so much from the way you've worked together. To the members, the Honourable Linda Burnley, Susan Lee, John McVeigh, Lou O'Brien, Warren Snowden, Senator Durham, Malandindri McCarthy, Rachel Seaworth and Amanda Stoker. It's been an absolute pleasure to work with you and I thank you. To the Secretariat for the work that they did. Such a difficult task, not only herding the cats that was the committee and our very complicated lives, but following up with the submissions, organising the public hearings and producing such a really good report at the end. Thank you. And to all the people who made submissions, the people who, before, who appeared before the committee and shared their wisdom, their courage, their leadership, and most of importantly for me, their goodwill. It has been an absolutely amazing committee for me to be on. It's the first time I've experienced bipartisan uh, co-chairs uh, working together. And it's the first time I've been on a committee of parliament when the numbers worked out. There are equal numbers of House of Reps and Senators. There were equal numbers of government and opposition and then two independents um, to manage it all. And the committee worked so well. The debate was fierce, the content was excellent, but the uh, professionalism of the people um, well, has left me really inspired by the role of committees in this parliament. And I'm really pleased with the final report. It's what I think is a very elegant report. And it's simple and clear in its recommendations. And in the recommendations, I'm going to speak particularly to one of the recommendations around truth-telling. But before I get there, I want to actually bring into Parliament and my words today how important this process has been in taking the work of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people for so many years uh, through the Statement from the Heart released at Uluru to this report. And I want to just grace my words today with the words from the Statement from the Heart. We seek constitutional reforms to empower our people and take a rightful place in our own country, where when we have power over our destiny, our children will flourish. They will walk in two worlds and their culture will be a gift to this country. And I have to say, I take those words with such optimism the thought that we've got 60,000 years of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander history that we're working with and projecting it into the future to think we might have another 60,000 years of, of this nation working together. And in this moment in time is where the past actually comes to its place and we can design our future, giving full recognition to the tradition, the cultures of the first people of this country. And I'm very keen to be part of that. So if I could move to one of the recommendations in the report about truth-telling. Um, in the foreword to the report, the quote is, we believe there is a strong desire among all Australians to know more about the history, traditions and cultures of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and their contact with other, other Australians, both good and bad. And a fuller understanding of our history including the relationships between black and white Australia, will lead to a more reconciled nation. And there are recommendations in the report to that effect. So today I want to talk a little bit about how I will take this report and work within my electorate to bring that recommendation to its, um, to its next stage. But in doing so, I actually want to read into Parliament, into the parliamentary Hansard, the names of the people in my electorate who made representation to this submission and to say thank you. Because I think in one of these committees, we often ignore or take for granted 
the enormous amount of time that people put into making submissions, the thought they give to it and the expertise they bring to it. So to John Van Reek, to Mari Selstrom, to Pam Griffith, to Chris Norman, to Warren Gould, Rhonda Diffie, Val Gleeson, Elizabeth Quinn, Judith Armet, the Violet Town and District Reconciliation Group, the Shepherd and Region Reconciliation Group, Dr Jackie Durant, Doug Westland, Rebecca Crawley, Pat Larkin, Kath Marriott, Kate Otto and Charlie Byron, Aubrey Wodonga Health, Liz Hetter, Tony Lane and Uncle Freddie. I've read every single one of your submissions, I've heard what you've had to say and I commit to continuing to work to deliver on the requests that you make. But in, not, in acknowledging the people who gave submissions, I also want to share with the House some follow-up work I've done since the, um, the public hearings finished, that in my lecture at Gathering Around Albury, there's a group called Wodonga First Nations Senior Consultative Group, and I met them two weeks ago to talk to them about uh, aspects of truth-telling in North East Victoria. And so I want to acknowledge Alan Stewart, Kevin and Lynn Bell, Rachel Bogey, Stephen Pickering, Jenny Murray, Liz Hetter, Pam Griffith, Walter Melrose, Sonny Morgan, uh, Tony and Julie, and Nancy Butler. And to say thank you for inviting me into your circle, and I look forward to meeting you late in January and continuing our discussion of some of the history of this land that I call home. And Deputy Speaker, I want to finish with a bit of um, why all this is so relevant and so close to my heart that when the initial apology was made in Parliament, the member for Indi at that time was not present. And it caused enormous suffering in my community that the member chose not to be there. And when I got elected, it was one of those things that I said I would put first and foremost to make sure that I represented my Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community. And I will do that. I will give voice to their issues. And one of the particular areas to give voice is the closing the gap report and process. And I've been working with the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet to talk about how the data collected for closing the gap is actually collected at a local level and how the institutions in my electorate can work together to set our own targets and we as a community take responsibility for our own targets. And to do that, one of the things we need to do is look at our history, to look at white settlement and the conflicts that happened there. There are very few traditional owners still living in North East Victoria because of the impact of white settlement. There's very few, very little data collected in my electorate around Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and their issues. There is some. And there's enormous amount of work that needs to be done in the justice area, in the health area, in the education area. But to do that, non-Indigenous and Indigenous people need to work together. A division has been called for the House. The proceedings are suspended to enable honourable members to attend. The question is that the document be noted and I call the member for Indo. Thank you, Speaker, or Deputy Speaker. And in conclusion, I really wanted to support the recommendation number three that the committee recommends that the Australian Government support the process of truth-telling. And this would include the involvement of local <coughs> organisations and communities, libraries, historical societies and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander associations. Some national coordination may be required, um, not to determine outcomes, but to provide incentive and vision. These projects should include both Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and descendants of local settlers. And this could be done either prior to or after the establishment of the local voices body. So in bringing my comments to a close, I would like to offer North East Victoria as a place where we could begin the process of truth telling and working with local settlers such as my family that have been in the community of North East Victoria since the gold rush days and my extended family and my community to work with the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander, uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander traditional owners and people who have come to the area more recently to begin the process of telling our truth, understanding our history, and then together with a much better process move forward 
for the next 60,000 years of Australia's history. Thank you, Deputy Speaker.